When we watch our favorite YouTubers on the internet, we develop a bond and a sort of connection with them. And then when they decide to leave the platform, it can feel like we're losing a friend. But sometimes our favorite YouTubers disappear without saying a word, and it really leaves us wondering where they could have gone. On today's most amazing top 10 list, I'll be covering just a few of the YouTubers who seem to have disappeared without a trace. Starting off this list at number 10, we have Kenny Beach. His real name is Kenneth Lee Beach, and he was an American YouTuber who posted videos of his hiking trips. He only ended up uploading five videos in total, but interacted a lot with other hiking channels, which helped him quickly gain popularity. Kenny was very proud of the toll his amazing and difficult hikes took on his body. He even said it took him three days to recover from his hikes usually, and that sometimes his toenails would even turn black and fall off. Near the end of 2014, Kenny posted a comment on a video that explained that while he normally enters every single cave he finds, when he found one that was shaped like an M and began to enter it, his whole body began to vibrate, and the closer he got, the feeling became more intense. The feeling really freaked him out, so he ended up getting out of there as quickly as possible. After this comment, tons of other users encouraged him to try and find the cave again and fight the eerie feeling and go inside and to make a video of it. Kenny did exactly this and made a video that ended up being his most viewed video titled M Cave Hike. Unfortunately, he was unable to find the same cave again. Viewers were upset that he was unable to find it and they quickly started pushing for him to look again, but there were a few comments begging Kenny to leave it alone and not to go back, fearing that he would be putting himself in a dangerous situation. On November 10th, 2014, Kenny set out once again to try and find the cave and explained to his family that he would just be going on a short overnight trip. Unfortunately. Kenny never returned home and the search began. His cell phone was discovered at the opening of an abandoned mine shaft, which many viewers thought they recognized from his M Cave hike video. Unfortunately, since then the trail has gone cold and Kenny still has yet to be located. While it is extremely unlikely, I really hope that he is still out there somewhere and hopefully one day we get the answers we're looking for and his family will get their much needed closure. In our number 9 spot today we have the YouTuber C Day. Before I jump into this one guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you're liking this video so far, it really helps us out. CD was an extremely popular Fortnite YouTuber and people loved his videos that really showed his personality and just how good he was at the game. He started as a Destiny player and really thrived doing that, but one day when the Destiny servers went down, he picked up Fortnite. He started playing Fortnite just as it was increasing in popularity and eventually switched from playing both Destiny and Fortnite to just playing Fortnite. A few months later, his channel absolutely blew up. His subscriber count tripled and his views were huge. Shortly after this blow up, he began to take random hiatuses. In 2018, C Day disappeared for a month and when he came back, he explained that he had a tough month moving houses, but at least he came back. A little later in 2018, he took another break from uploading, but this time it was for seven weeks. When he came back, he didn't really give a reason for his break, not that he has to, but then he went back to his regular uploads. For a third time, he disappeared off the platform for another month, and this time it actually began to lose him subscribers. He eventually came back, just like all the times before, and promised that he wouldn't disappear again, but all his videos were posted very sporadically and were of different games. In 2020, C Day has only uploaded six videos, and his last upload was all the way back in February. This is definitely the longest he has been away from the platform, which has us wondering where the heck did he go? Go. Well, luckily C Day has posted on Instagram a few times this year, so we know he is safe. He posted a story that said, The longer I am away from YouTube, the harder it is to come back. I can't stand it. The last we heard from him was on Instagram in August, and he explained that he would be coming back, but he wouldn't be playing Fortnite anymore, which is pretty understandable for him to want to move on. He said he would start playing games like Fall Guys, but we haven't seen any uploads since. It's very possible that 2020 just got to him, or maybe he just lost his passion for uploading videos, both of which are extremely valid. Wherever he is and whatever he is up to, I hope he's doing well, and maybe we'll see him come back sometime in the future. 
here. In our number eight spot, we have the GWR Studios. This was a channel that mostly made videos pointing out little mistakes made in the Thomas the Tank Engine series. It was pretty wholesome content that gained him close to 200,000 subscribers, as well as 9 million views on his last video, which was posted on November 28th, 2017. With such a successful video being left as his last one, it has me wondering where did he disappear to? Well, the internet is filled with cyber sleuths who can figure out a lot of stuff. It turns out that he actually started a new channel called Neo Auto. This channel is basically just a car channel. I don't know anything about cars, so I won't even attempt to dive into any Anything further about that. After finding this out, I was glad he was safe, but then I had to ask, why would you leave such a successful channel to start from scratch? Well, we don't exactly have confirmation on it, but it is thought that his original channel might have been flagged for copyright since it features only content from movies and cartoons. If a video has copyright in it, you can't make money off of it, so it's very possible that he needed to create a new channel so that he would be able to use it as a source of income. It is also entirely possible that he just didn't want to make that type of content anymore, or perhaps it's a combination of the two things, or something entirely different. I really don't know for sure, but I'm glad that his disappearance from his channel had a pretty alright conclusion. In our number 7 spot we have Grumpy Jisan. Grumpy Jisan, whose real name was actually Bruce Wayne, which is the coolest name ever, was a wonderful older gentleman who made videos on anime. He was very well loved by anime fans and truly was an internet gem. He began posting in 2007 and his last upload came on May 19th, 2011 and it currently has over 40,000 views. His videos would show him discussing different animes while also outside in some sort of nature scene and always with a hat and carrying a backpack. Fans were concerned when he suddenly stopped posting videos to his channel and began to wonder where he could have gone. Well, it turns out that Bruce had very severe arthritis in his hands that caused him to be unable to continue with YouTube. He continued to follow anime as it truly was his passion. In 2014, Bruce's grandson gave the internet an update. Bruce had unfortunately passed away on January 4th of 2014 at age 89. He was surrounded by by all those who loved him. Coming in at number six, we have the YouTubers who went by Mac Adventures. They were a father and son channel with a destination of Area 51. In 2016, they had posted a video of them finally arriving at the Area 51 border. As they arrive at the border, a couple of agents in full camo gear pull up to them in a truck, get out with guns in their hands, and basically ask them to leave the premises. After the video was posted, they released one more video, and then an extended version of their original original Area 51 video, and then they went totally silent. All of their social media were blown up with people believing that the Area 51 video was fake, which has led some people to believe that they just decided they didn't want to continue creating content because of the negativity, but that's not what everyone believed. A lot of people believed that maybe they had just gone back to Area 51 and tried to get further into the closed off area than last time and ended up getting arrested or maybe even worse. After a few years of people speculating and wondering what happened to them, last year there was finally an update. The son of the duo ended up doing a YouTube live stream where it was finally explained that they had just decided to take a break and it ended up becoming more of a permanent decision than they had originally planned on. While this is sort of an anticlimactic ending, it's definitely the best outcome that could have happened. At our fifth spot and our halfway mark, we have the YouTuber called Magic of Rahat. I'm not sure if you guys remember this guy, but he started on YouTube in 2007 and it started with card trick videos and then moved to prank videos. In 2014, he played a prank on a homeless man named Eric. He gave Eric a fake lottery ticket and told him that he had won $1,000. Eric, being the seemingly sweet man that he is, wanted to split the prize with Rahat, but of course he declined the offer. This video blew up and so many people wanted to donate to Eric, so a GoFundMe was set up with a goal of $20,000, but it ended up reaching over double that goal. A few months later, another video was uploaded with Eric, and this time it was a video of Rahat giving Eric a house that was paid for by all of the people who wanted to support Eric. Flash forward a few years and this really took a turn. In February of 2018, a video of someone interviewing Eric was posted and Eric let it spill that he didn't receive any of the money from the GoFundMe and that the house he was given
given needed constant maintenance. Eric said that he only stayed in the house for two months and then the house was sold for 5000 less than what was raised in the fundraiser. By the end of April 2018, Rahat had no activity on his channel anymore. On June 5th, 2018, Rahat posted saying that the money had been transferred to Eric and that he would post the bank statements to prove it, but that post has since been deleted. On June 11th, 2018, Eric had another video come out where he explained he didn't want any more of the drama and that he forgave Rahat for not sending any of the money, but later in July changed his mind and began accusing Rahat again. This whole whirlwind is finally reaching its conclusion as on October 16th of this year, Rahat finally tweeted, I'm still here. He ended up tweeting the proof of him transferring the funds and on November 19th, he ended up releasing a video where he explained everything that happened and all the proof to back it up. Apparently Rahat is now living in West Virginia where he invests in real estate and owns a chain of coffee shops. Maybe he'll return to YouTube, but I could totally understand if he didn't want to. I'm just so glad that this whole thing with him and Eric has finally been cleared up. In our number four spot, we have SSTEAS. -E they were a YouTuber who made EAS or emergency alert system videos. Last year, their channel was deleted and the EAS community was shocked to hear of his death and an outpouring of support came to him and his family. But things quickly took a turn just a few months later. As it turns out, SSTES actually faked his own death, which is crazy. It's super sketchy to do that, so it had people wondering what actually happened to him since his channel was now deleted. Well, in an even crazier turn of events, he is actually in jail. I guess he must have faked his own death so that people wouldn't know what actually happened to him. I can understand wanting privacy, but it's still pretty crazy for everyone to have just been lied to about something like that. It looks like he'll be in jail for around the next 15 years or so, but I obviously don't know what happened super personally, so it's possible it could turn into a shorter or a longer sentence. In our number three spot today, we have that guy who camps. That guy who camps is an American gaming YouTuber with 336,000 subscribers. He started in 2009 and gained a decent amount of subscribers quickly. In November of 2013, he just disappeared off the platform that had everyone wondering where he went. Well, in April of this year, seven years later, he made a huge comeback and uploaded a video explaining to everyone where he had gone. He talked about how the things he was going through really just became too much for him to handle and he was too emotionally unstable to be uploading videos. He spoke about being diagnosed with alopecia universalis at 15, how one of his parents had a mental breakdown and the other parent wasn't there for him, and how he had met a girl online and flew out to meet her but it didn't end well and he ended up leaving feeling very heartbroken. It was really nice to finally find out where he had gone and to see him continue his regular uploads, but five months ago was the last time he posted, which seems like he has disappeared again. I'm not exactly sure where he has gone to, but 2020 has been a lot for most people, so it's extremely possible that he just needs another break. I read the comments on his last video and it was so nice to see everyone wishing him well and hoping for his return whenever he feels ready. Continuing on to number two, we have Kaylee Elise. Kaylee was a true crime YouTuber who covered things like missing people and unsolved crimes. In 2019, we did get a heads up from Kaylee that she would unfortunately be leaving the platform due to some health concerns that she was facing, and in a live stream goodbye, she assured assured fans that she would keep her videos up for everyone to continue enjoying. This is all fine and well, but people got very concerned a few months later. In December of 2019, her entire channel was deleted. It caused a lot of fans to worry about what happened to her and if her health concerns worsened after she left the channel. Unfortunately, there hasn't been an update this year on what happened or what led to the deletion of her channel, but some people have begun re-uploading her videos so that people can continue to enjoy the content. Wherever she is, I hope she's able to take care of her health concerns and focus on herself. In our number one spot today, we have Kate Yup. Kate was a mukbang ASMR YouTuber who started on the platform in 2018. For some reason, she was always blindfolded in her videos, but maybe that was just to protect her identity. Shortly before she stopped uploading videos, fans began to notice some strange behavior and bruises on her arms. This of course got people worried and rumors began to fly. People began to dive deep into her videos and people could swear that she was sending messages asking for help and saying that she was eating as if she hadn't been fed for a long time. 
time. This of course made people believe that she had been kidnapped and was being forced to make these videos. Before she disappeared, she did make a comment saying that she was fine and that no one was forcing her to eat, but fans still aren't convinced. Kate's last video was posted on November 10th of 2019, and it featured her tooth literally falling out of her mouth, which then fueled the fire even more on this kidnapping conspiracy. At the end of the day, I don't know where Kate Yup went or what happened to her, but I really believe that these far-fetched rumors are absolutely not true and that she is still thriving and eating delicious foods every day. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the channel Violet First. This channel is an American family YouTube channel that was created by the matriarch of the family. Their content includes prank videos, vacation videos, and some videos where they open and unbox fan mail. The channel has 563,000 subscribers and their most viewed video has over 4 million views. They were a really popular YouTube channel that usually posted once or twice a week, but the last video they uploaded was on Christmas Day in 2018, so where did they go? Well, it seems as though they decided to stop making videos. Some theories as to why they might have stopped have to do with their struggle with demonetization on the platform, but other theories suggest that the son, William, who was featured in most of the videos, was just getting too old and didn't want to be in the videos anymore. Both of those are pretty valid reasons for leaving the platform, but it is also possible that they just wanted to explore other avenues. There's always the chance that they could come back because their channel is still active, as well as their Instagram and Twitter, but I guess guess we'll all just have to wait and see. In our number 9 spot today we have Kevin Kevin. Kevin Kevin is an American YouTuber who posts gaming and commentary videos. His channel currently has 48.3 thousand subscribers and over 9.5 million views, but he hasn't posted on his channel for 5 years. So where did he go? Well, honestly? I'm not sure, but there is one popular theory floating around the internet. It is said that while his channel was active, he was also in school and working a job, which is a lot to balance for anyone. Apparently, he might have got a little too caught up in making videos and other areas in his life began to slip, which led to him getting fired from his job. It is said that he decided to quit making videos for YouTube in order to focus on his personal life and get things back on track. I'm not sure how much of this is true, if any of it, but it all does sound very reasonable. I hope that wherever Kevin Kevin is, that he's doing better, and maybe one day we'll get a surprise upload if he feels inspired. Moving on to number 8, we have the user Paranormal Lana, who also was known by the name Alana G. She was a pretty popular YouTuber with over 50,000 subscribers and mostly covered content that was either paranormal, spooky in some way, or real events. On September 3rd, 2015, her channel was just suddenly deleted as well as all of her social media accounts. This quickly became a huge topic of conversation among other YouTubers who were in the same genre as Alana. One person began to point out that just prior to her disappearance from the internet, she had posted a series of tweets explaining that she had a pretty serious stalker incident and she was having to change how her social medias were being managed. Although many cyber sleuths have looked into where she could have gone, no one is exactly certain of what happened to her. If she really did have a stalker, maybe disappearing was the only thing she could do. I just hope that she is safe wherever she ended up. In our number 7 spot today we have the YouTuber Jess Rain. His real name is Jess Meat and he is a Canadian YouTuber who used his South Asian roots to inspire his content for his videos. He covers topics from pop culture parodies to commentary on race and his struggles with racism. His last video came in December of 2018 and after all of this, all of his social media accounts became inactive. There are some speculations as to where he could have gone. Some people believe that he may have given up YouTube in order to pursue a more normal life and get married and raise a family, but some others believe that he is working on something behind the scenes and that is why he has shifted his focus. Well, it's kind of crazy to be making this video today because literally just a few days ago there was an announcement that gave us a conclusion to this story and some answers to the questions we've all been asking. Jasmeet has been working on a new comedy series that is set to come out in 2021 called Late Bloomer. He's producing the series but also acting in it and it will apparently follow a similar storyline to what his life has been like. I couldn't be happier to know that he is okay and to hear that his YouTube hiatus has been for something so exciting for him and I can't wait to see Late Bloomer when it comes out. Heading on down to number 6 we have Daisy Brown. Daisy Brown was a popular horror web series that followed a girl named Daisy raising a monster named Alan that her father created before leaving her alone. There are about 35 videos uploaded over a little over a year with the final video being posted 
posted in August of 2018 and receiving over a million views. The content was strange, but very interesting and had fans really invested. The nice thing about this disappearance is that the last video was literally titled Final Video, which gave fans an idea that she would be leaving the platform. But who is Daisy and what happened to her? Well, as it turns out, she just ended the series. It really is that simple. Daisy is actually a woman named Julia Dapper, and she said she created the series as a way to experiment with and explore storytelling. She made the series while she was in school full time, which is quite the feat. While the story of Daisy Brown might be over, Julia is still doing well and creating content and can be found on TikTok under the username YeetPolice8. That's such a good TikTok name, I'm so jealous. <laughs> In our number 5 spot today we have TV Filthy Frank. TV Filthy Frank was a controversial YouTube channel. Filthy Frank was a satirical character played by George Miller who is meant to embody basically just everything that you don't want a person to be. In 2017 his videos stopped coming which had people very concerned. It was quickly found out that he has had some health concerns that he needed to attend to so he wouldn't be posting videos anymore. But where is he in 2020? Well, George has left Filthy Frank and has gone on to start a music Music career under the artist name Joji. He creates music that is described as trip hop or lo fi, and George has said that the music he used to make for the characters was fun, but now he gets to make music that is more true to himself. It's great that George has been able to find success doing something he loves so much and is able to create art that he believes is an authentic reflection of himself. He has also teased that it is possible we will see a filthy Frank return, so. Who knows? Continuing on to number 4 we have Spy Kitten TV who was also known as Dasha. Dasha made a lot of videos about the Illuminati and people that she suspected were members. Her last video was posted in July of 2018 and while all of her social media profiles remain up and active, no one has heard from her or seen a post since. It is possible that she just decided to leave the internet life behind, but it is kind of curious that she didn't leave any sort of farewell. People have speculated that she was exposing too many secrets and ended up being kidnapped or silenced by the Illuminati, while others believe that she met some sort of ill fate in another way. I'm sure those in her personal life know what happened to her, and while I wish someone could give us some sort of update, I suppose it really is none of our business unless they decide they want to share. Hopefully she is out there somewhere and maybe someday we'll know what happened and where she went. In our number 3 spot today we have Victoria Flamel. Victoria was a Danish vlogger who posted content for people to relate to. She had a very popular channel but in 2017 she just kind of vanished. She hasn't posted anything on Twitter or YouTube since 2016 and her last Instagram post was in 2017, so where did she go? Well, as of what I could find, no one really knows. The biggest rumor is that she got doxxed and needed to leave the public eye. Getting doxxed is when someone finds out all of your personal information such as your full name, your address, your phone number, the names of your family, and then they post it on the internet for everyone to see. This is not only super invasive but also unbelievably dangerous. Many people believe that this is why she left all of her platforms and I truly don't blame her. It would be super scary to have all of your personal information out there and I'm sure that she was pretty scared for her and her family safety. This is all just speculation though and I hope that she's been able to get the privacy that she obviously needed and deserves and maybe one day we'll get a solid answer on what happened to her. In our number 2 spot we have FPS Russia. This firearms and explosives channel began in 2010 and it features Kyle Myers playing a character named Dimitri who is supposed to be a man from Moscow. The channel was extremely popular with over 6 million subscribers but the upload stopped in April of 2016. There was never any official statements made on the channel before it became inactive so fans were wondering what could have happened. Well, it's a doozy. In January of 2013, one of the channel's producers, Keith Ratliff, was actually found dead in the gun store that he owned. There still isn't a lot known about what happened to him, but of course this caused the rest of the channel's team to need to take a bit of a break. This was all the way in 2013 though and they eventually began uploading again, but their videos just weren't the same. A few months later, Kyle's home ended up being raided by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives under the suspicion of him being in possession of an illegal explosive. After the raid, the channel definitely began uploading videos less frequently and with a hiatus from April 2013 to January of 2014, but there was still activity the rest of the time and the channel kept growing. In April of 2016, the last FPS Russia video was uploaded and everyone wondered 
what happened. Well, for a while, Kyle was part of a separate YouTube channel as well as a podcast, but was having some troubles with firearms and explosives licensing, which is why a lot of people think he stopped the FPS Russia channel. Near the end of 2017, Kyle ended up being arrested because there were illegal drugs found in his P.O. box and his home was raided and a bunch of his firearms ended up being seized. Kyle ended up being sentenced in June of 2019 to two months in prison as well as two years of probation. He ended up serving his time and has since been released and has actually been back on the podcast which is called Painkiller Already. In our number one spot today, we have the channel Actually Happened. Actually Happened is an animated account that claims to tell the real stories of real children through voice acting as well as their animation. They originated in 2018 and quickly gained over 1 million subscribers. They began to come under fire after their stories were clearly verbatim ripped off of Reddit, and then they began to post stories that could easily be proven untrue. People were obviously upset because these were supposed to be real stories for people to connect with, but they were literally just being stolen or made up to make money. Suddenly, all of the channel's videos just disappeared, but the channel still exists. The videos haven't been completely removed, but they have all been privatized, which has led people to an interesting theory. People believe that they might be in some sort of legal battle, which is why the videos and the channel haven't been totally deleted. The parent company that owns Actually Happened has taken their logo off of their website when it used to be one of their most proud achievements. It is possible that they might be opening up a new channel and want to recycle the content, which is why they privated the videos, but as of right now, this is just all speculation. I'm not not sure what actually happened to actually happened, but I hope that we find out soon. Starting off this list, we have Jenny Souk. Jenny was a popular YouTuber with 306,000 subscribers. She posted videos of her singing covers and some of her own original music. She has a beautiful voice and is usually stuck in more of an R&B genre. Her last video was uploaded in June of 2014, which was six years ago. She resurfaced for a quick moment on Twitter and Instagram in 2017, but has been radio silent ever since. There aren't a ton of speculations on where she went or what happened, but some people believe that maybe she is now creating music under an alias or that she quit the music business altogether. Whatever happened to her, I hope she is doing well and is safe and sound. Moving on to number 9, we have the user Coban or Manny. His name is Coban and he was a gamer channel where he mostly played Sonic and Mario games. He has over 1 million subscribers, but his last upload was on May 13th of 2018. So where did he go? Well, although he was pretty private about his personal life, he actually did let us know what happened and where he went. On July 16th of 2018, he let us all know that he had left YouTube and actually ended up going to a mental health facility because of some of his personal struggles that he was going through, and he also revealed that he had been diagnosed with autism. He said he thought about making more videos, but it felt like it was too much pressure because he simply just isn't ready. Since his disappearance from YouTube, he has sometimes been featured on other channels, and had a few YouTube stories, but he mostly remains inactive. I'm super glad that he was able to recognize that he needed help with his mental health and that he made the steps to address it because that could not have been easy. I hope that whatever he is up to now, he is feeling better and happy. In our number 8 spot we have Primnik. Primnik is a YouTuber who makes commentary videos and is known for keeping their face and identity a secret. Their first video came in 2018 and they quickly gained popularity, but 8 months ago they just stopped posting on YouTube and fans began to wonder where they went. Once I went to Twitter I was able to find some some answers. They are still very active on Twitter and while they haven't made an extremely long explanation of where they went, one of their tweets really just sums it up for us. On July 10th they tweeted, new video will come, I've been sad and tired and I ate a lot of Taco Bell. Ah, Honestly, this is something that I think we can all relate to in one way or another. Unfortunately, there still hasn't been another upload and honestly, there may never be. But the important thing is that Primnik is doing what they need to do in order to be happy and healthy. I'm just glad that we all have some answers to all of our questions. Also, in other good news, their channel has surpassed 1 million subscribers even after being on a hiatus. This really is a sign of just how much fans love their content. Moving on down to number 7, we have Shima Luan. Shima Luan was an American YouTuber who worked for the channel Super Planet Dolan. It was an animated channel and Shima was one of the most active characters on the channel and was well liked by those who watched. In 2016 in a video called The Future of Planet Dolan, 
They explained that Shima had suddenly fallen out of contact with the other people on the channel, but the last time they spoke, she was safe, so they didn't suspect anything bad. Of course, a lot of viewers didn't believe this and began to speculate that this was the crew trying to cover up her disappearance. In February of this year, a YouTuber called Scarce Theater made a video taking a look into Shima's disappearance, and one of the members of the Dolan crew left a comment that may have cleared some things up for us. The comment read, It's sort of an unsolvable mystery to those who don't know her, because to solve it in a satisfying way publicly, we'd have to invade the actress who played Shima's personal life on a public level. No one who walks away from a job in entertainment wants to be dragged out in the public and shown around. That would be ghoulish. In respect to the privacy of others, all I can say is that this is one of the better videos on the topic. Everyone else fell into trappings of teasing ideas of conspiracy and horror. Truth is, we always had trouble getting folks to separate the cartoons from the actors. This definitely leads us to believe that Shima had her reasons for leaving the channel, but it truly is none of our business. It's easy to forget that some of our favorite creators are also real people who deserve to have their lives kept private, if they so choose. While we miss Shima's content, it's good to know that she is safe. In our number six spot today, we have Alan Tutorials. This channel is probably the weirdest thing I have ever seen in my life. The videos are of a guy named Alan who is making tutorials around his house, but they are all strange. I don't even know how to explain them to you, so you'll just have to go and watch them for yourself. As time goes on, his videos only get stranger. He does things like cutting his hand on a rusty nail, but continuing to film the video with his his bloody hand, and there's one where he destroys his entire apartment and then gets locked outside, and another one where it honestly seems like he's been kidnapped and is in the back of a moving van. His last upload was on December 12th, 2014, and then he just disappeared. The videos had me so creeped out that when I went digging on this one, I was kind of surprised to find out what happened. Well, it turns out that Alan in these videos isn't real. I mean, he is real, but he is a character being played by his creator, Alan Resnick. Alan created this series in 2011 and it blew up with his last video getting 2 million views. Since the Alan Tutorials page has been inactive, the real Alan has still been working as a writer and actor and his latest short film called May I Please Enter was released in 2018. It's good to know that the guy in the Alan Tutorials video was not real because he was doing some pretty disturbing stuff, but it's even better to know that the real Alan is doing well. In our number 5 spot today we have Beastie. Beastie is a gaming YouTuber with almost 800,000 subscribers. He uploaded himself playing video games like Red Dead Redemption and Last of Us. His last upload was almost 4 months ago now and it was him playing the ghost of Toshima. I know that 4 months ago isn't a long time, but he was uploading around 20 videos a month before he just fell off the platform. His Instagram and Twitter also haven't been posted on in a while, which makes us all wonder. Where did Beastie go? Well, while I'm not sure why he hasn't been uploading videos, the good news is that he is still active and has been streaming with other gamers. Making YouTube videos takes a lot of time and effort and it's entirely possible that maybe something came up and he hasn't had the time, or maybe he just doesn't want to. Some people believe that he also may live somewhere in Texas, and with the recent Hurricane Laura that saw damage in both Louisiana and Texas, it could be possible that he is dealing with the aftermath of that, but it truly is just speculation at this point. I hope that he is okay and that we see some new videos go up on the Beastie channel very soon. In our number 4 spot today we have Mr. Gstar321. Mr. Gstar was an Australian gaming YouTuber who mostly played Mortal Kombat. He would upload pretty regularly, but in July of 2018 his videos just abruptly stopped. Fans of Mr. Gstar began to worry about where he had gone and made some speculations. Some people believe that the Mortal Kombat content may have been too heavily monitored, which made it difficult to make videos, and this possibly led him to just stopping altogether. Honestly, I don't know where Mr. Gstar went or what happened to him. I know that periodically people will see his gamer tag, but who knows if that's just really him or someone who stole the name. There has to be some answers out there somewhere, so please leave a comment down below if you have any more information than I do, because I'm sure we would all love to know what happened. Coming in at number 3 we have Marina Joyce. 
Marina was a popular makeup and fashion YouTuber and had a large 2.1 million following. People began noticing that something just wasn't right about her behavior in her new videos, feeling like she was more distracted. This led them to believe that she could be scared or in some kind of danger. Eventually people noticed a gun in the background of one of her videos, bruises on her arms, and people said she wasn't blinking as much and even swore that they heard her whisper, help me. In 2019, Marina ended up going missing for 10 days. While she was missing, her boyfriend was tweeting that she was safe, even though the police had an active investigation into her whereabouts, and he tried to shut down any claims that he was acting suspiciously, even though it's super suspicious to say that a missing person is safe when no one knows where they are. After it was confirmed that Marina had been found, she tweeted that she never actually went missing, even though, like I mentioned before, the police were actively looking for her. She claimed that her suspicious boyfriend had been taking care of her. There are a lot of speculations about what happened and why she disappeared for that time, but she claims that she is not in any sort of toxic relationship and just wants her fans to watch her videos and stop worrying. Hopefully she really is okay and fans were just reading into things that weren't actually anything, but it's a super bizarre situation. Heading down to number two, we have the user Let's Play Guitar. This channel started back in 2014 and gained about 1.65 million subscribers. The channel consisted of this guy teaching people how to play songs on guitar, and it was truly just a nice and wholesome educational content. His last upload came on July 3rd, 2018, and then he just vanished. No one really knows what happened to this guy or where he went, but rumors began to spread that he could have started a new channel called Fingerstyle Club. The new channel featured the exact same thumbnail as Let's Play Guitar and had similar videos, but the voice of the person really just doesn't sound the same. And also, why would somebody start a new channel when they already have one and a half million subscribers? In an even creepier and more sad rumor, some people believe that he may have passed away and that is why his channel was left inactive. All in all, we really don't know where he went, but I hope he just got busy with his life and decided to stop posting, but that he is totally okay. And our number one spot we have Secure Team 10 and hold on because this one is a wild one. Secure Team 10 was created by a man named Tyler Glockner and was YouTube's largest underground reporting channel. He posted insane content almost every single day and it honestly became popular for people to debunk his footage. Like the time someone showed how in an interview video Tyler had just distorted his voice a bit and it was revealed that he was actually just interviewing himself. Tyler began paying people off to stop debunking his videos and apparently paid people to dislike the videos that spoke bad about him. After this, his upload schedule began to become more inconsistent and rumors began to spread that he had some sort of drug or alcohol problem, which he of course denied. Then we saw a time where no uploads were happening and everyone was wondering what happened to him. Because of the kind of content he posted, people seriously thought that he might have been kidnapped by the government or something like that but he suddenly released a video where he wanted to explain what happened. The video was basically just him explaining that he was having a hard couple of months and that he stopped posting videos because he was working on a documentary. He then said that he began getting threats and cease and desist orders to shut his channel down. He goes on to explain that one day he fell asleep and the next thing he remembers is waking up in his car with a police officer standing outside of it, just randomly charging him with a DUI, even though he claims that he's barely ever had a sip of alcohol. Alcohol. He then goes on to say that a short while later he was arrested again for domestic abuse but claims he was innocent. This was quickly debunked when the police dash cam footage was released and it showed him crashing into a pole after driving under the influence and you can also see him failing a field sobriety test and he did end up getting charged for both of the things he claimed he did not do. I am not a judge or a jury so I truly have no idea but I am just telling you what happened. Eventually all of the videos were removed from his channel which had people once again wondering what happened. But as it turns out, he actually stole his logo from another artist and it was on every single one of his videos. One of the channels that used to debunk all of his videos ended up buying the rights to the logo from the artist. So they were able to basically claim his entire channel and all of his merch and his Patreon and they were the ones who actually removed the videos from the channel. Mm -hmm. 